There it is, the Apple Watch Ultra 2. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a deep dive on all of the new features of this watch. And in some ways, we'll be talking about the Apple Watch Series 9 as well, because they do share a lot in common. Keep in mind though, that I will have an entirely separate video about the Series 9. So if you wanna learn about that, check it out on my channel. But in this video, let's focus on the Ultra 2. I'm gonna walk through each new feature on the Ultra 2 and talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and of course, what it's been like to live with this thing on my wrist ever since the Apple Apple event about a week ago. Along the way, I'll also share some test results and some interesting findings when it comes to battery life, so stay tuned for that. Let's get right to the point of this video and take a look at the hardware on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, because if you take a look at this watch, it looks nearly identical to the Apple Watch Ultra 1 I have on the right side of the screen here. The Ultra 2 is on the left, the Ultra 1 is on the right, and they are exactly the same. There is literally nothing on the design of this watch to tell them apart, which is really confusing for a guy like me who has them. So I've been been keeping this gray band on the new one in my old dingy yellow one on the old one just to tell them apart. The really interesting thing about the design of the Ultra 2 is that every detail is identical. If I flip these watches over on the old Apple Watch Ultra 1, you can see right at the top there, if you can see it on my camera, it says Watch Ultra, just indicating it's the original Watch Ultra, while on the Ultra 2, it also just says Watch Ultra, there's no version two, no gen two, no two at all to indicate that this is the newer version. In fact, in many ways, these two watches are identical. If I were to hand these to my wife and ask her to tell me which is which, she would have no way to do that unless she was a nerd like me and would dive into the settings and look at the model number. In that case, she'd probably figure it out. So before we get to the new stuff on the Watch Ultra 2, I think it would just be easier to start this video by telling you what's the same about the Ultra 2 compared to the Ultra 1. Other than the design of these watches, the build quality is the same. They both have a titanium case and a sapphire lens, and the only difference with the Ultra 2 is that it's now using recycled materials, which we will talk about later in this video. Another similarity between the Ultra 2 and Ultra 1 is the included bands. You still have the choice of Alpine Loop, the Ocean Band, or the Trail Loop when you're deciding which model you want to get. However, on the Ultra 2, there are additional colors to choose from, like for example, this one is the gray and green color, which I really like. Along with the bands being similar, the user interface is the same. Both these watches run Watch OS 10, which has all the upgrades I've talked about in previous videos, so I'm not gonna dive too deep on that. And then on top of that, both watches do feature the same internal GPS chipset, so they both have multi-band GNSS chipsets, which have really good accuracy. I've done some testing on the new Ultra 2, I don't know why, because it's the same as the Ultra Ultra 1, and in my testing over the past week of running with this watch, it is really good. It's identical to the Ultra 1, and we'll, we'll probably just stop talking about it there. And of course, on top of the GPS chipset being the same, so is the heart rate sensor. The same optical heart rate sensor with the SpO2 sensor built in is used on the Ultra 2, which is used on the Ultra 1, and again, I'm getting good results from both. It didn't get better, it didn't get worse, it's pretty good. And the final similarity between the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and the new Ultra 2 is going to be the price. At launch, both of these watches came in at $799. With the similarities out of the way, let's dive into what's new about these new models. And I wanna start this off with the included bands. Like I said before, the bands are generally the same design, but they're now a little bit different because they're made with recycled materials. And this is really going to boil down to which model you choose. So if you choose the Alpine Loop or the Trail Loop I have here, you will receive a carbon neutral model, which we'll talk about later in this video. In this case, the Trail Loop I have here is made with 100% recycled polyester and spandex. And on that note, Apple isn't the only one using recycled materials. I also have a Nike Blue Flame version of their sport band here, which I really like. This is a really cool look, but this band in particular is also made with recycled materials. However, it's not as recycled as the Trail Loop. This band is made with 32% recycled fluoroelastomer, a fluoroelastomer, that's a hard word to say, fluoroelastomer, whew, that's a tough one. I was a little bit concerned about the recycled trail band because I really like the original version of the trail band, it's very comfortable. I thought it might get a little bit tougher or more uncomfortable because it's using recycled materials. I don't know how it works, I just had that in my head. I can confirm, however, in person, the feeling between the old band and the new band, they're basically the same, I can't tell them apart, and they're both very comfortable. Okay, with the bands out of the way, let's get to the big stuff here. The first one is going to be improved brightness on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. The new Apple Watch Ultra 2 can boost its brightness all the way up to 3000 nits of maximum brightness. 
That is insanely bright. For context, the Garmin Foreigner 965 I'm wearing right now has about a thousand nits of brightness and this watch I consider it to be very bright. So the fact this goes up to 3000 nits is absolutely insane. And that's a thousand nits more than the previous model at 2000 nits on the Apple Watch Ultra 1. Let's talk about my real life experience with the brightness on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 compared to the Ultra 1. Honestly, in most cases, it's pretty hard to notice. If you're in a normal environment, like inside of a house or a building or somewhere where it's not crazy bright, both these watches look identical for the most part. There's really no difference in their displays. The only time you notice that max peak brightness is in blaring bright direct sunlight. If you're standing under the sun directly and you've got the sun blaring on your watch, that's the only time you're gonna notice it boost up to that 3000 nits of brightness. And another situation where you see that max brightness is in the flashlight app, obviously. If I turn on the flashlight app on both of these models, you can see right now they kind of look the same, but if I roll the digital crown on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, it gets insanely bright. It's kind of hard to notice on camera, but it is very bright and it's quite a bit noticeably brighter than the Apple Watch Ultra 1. Now keep in mind, this is not sustained. So when you're in the flashlight app and you need a little bit more brightness from the flashlight, you can roll that crown and get about 30 seconds, give or take, of extra brightness before it dims back down. Now let's talk about the other side of things. That's the minimum brightness setting on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, because that also got an increase, well, or a decrease in this case, from two nits of brightness on the Apple Watch Ultra 1 to one nit of brightness on the Ultra 2. That means it can get really dim in dark situations. And just like the max brightness, you're only gonna notice this one nit of brightness in super dark situations. Hey there, quick interruption. Are you enjoying this video or finding it helpful? If you are, I'd really appreciate it if you went down and gave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. That'd be great. Okay. Back to the video. Let's move on to the next new upgrade on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Series 9. That's kind of a big deal. And that's the new S9 SIP. Yes, I said SIP, not chip. That's not my lisp kicking in. It stands for System in Package. And it's basically the package where the CPU and GPU live. Apple claims in the S9 processor or S9 SIP, there's 60% more transistors and it's 30% faster when it comes to the GPU. It also has increased machine learning with a four core neural engine. What does that all mean for you at the end of the day when you're using these watches? Well, not much. I've never really had a complaint about the speed of any Apple Watch, especially the latest Series 8 or Apple Watch Ultra 1. That being said, if you look very closely, launching apps side by side between the Ultra 1 and Ultra 2, you will notice a very slight difference. And this speed difference is really only noticeable with heavier apps. So that begs the question, why did Apple put a new S9 SIP in this new model? Well, there are a few things. First of all, the new S9 SIP is more power efficient while also being more powerful. And because of that, watchOS can actually leverage that new chip to do new things at a software level that provide additional features to the Ultra 2 that the Ultra 1 can't do. And the first one is on-device Siri processing. So as the name implies, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 can now do on-device Siri processing. When you make a Siri request, it will actually process it on the watch, where on the Ultra 1, it would have to send it to the cloud to be processed by Siri servers and then come back to your watch to do whatever action it was supposed to do. And there's a couple of major benefits because of that. First of all, Siri is just faster. Hey, Siri, send a text message. Who do you want to message? Hey, Siri, send a text message. Who do you want to message? And the second benefit to this on-device processing is that you no longer need a cellular or Wi-Fi connection to complete a task with Siri. And there is one more Siri feature that's coming down the road that's not out yet, so I'm unable to test it, and that is Siri and Apple Health integration. So basically, because of the on-device processing, you'll be able to get more information from Siri about your health. You could ask, how did I sleep last night? What's my current VO2 max? What's my average heart rate throughout the day? And all that information can be spoken to you from Siri without having to open up the app and read about your previous night of sleep manually. Another new feature on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 in Series 9 is a new ultra wideband chip that enables it to locate your phone when you lose it. This is probably a pretty minor upgrade for a lot of people, but personally for me, as someone who loses his phone all the time, this is a really welcome feature. The way this works is you simply ping your phone, just like you would on any Apple Watch, where on my Apple Watch Ultra 1, it makes this sort of ringtone sound go off on my phone so I can locate it audibly. Now, if I do the same thing on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and ping my phone on this one, 
You can see that it does the same thing and it has that audible sound. However, this time around, I also get this little dialogue to let me know how far away I am from my phone. Unfortunately, this new Find My Phone feature, while it is awesome, only works on the brand new iPhone 15 or newer. I've got the base model iPhone 15 here. And keep in mind, this functionality is not a cellular feature. So if you're out of range of the phone, it won't actually pick up where it actually is until you get close enough for it to pick up that ultra wideband chip and then it'll let you know in what direction to walk to find your phone. Let's move on to the new watch face on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and that is this new modular watch face. And you can see here, I actually have it installed on both the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Ultra 1 because it's available on both watches. So this new modular watch face is probably my favorite watch face that Apple has ever made. Just because it looks a little bit more utilitarian, I think it fits a little bit more of the design aesthetic that the Ultra is going for. And the really cool thing about it is it's more customizable than any other watch face, I think. So if I dive into the settings here and I click on edit, I can do various things like change my compl complications and information. However, there's something really unique to this watch face and it's that you can actually change the size of the text or the font of the time. So here I've got it pretty small, but if I roll my crown up here, I can have it pretty large and I can include the seconds in there as well. Where other watch faces typically don't allow you to do that. So I can choose that and I can also enable night mode here, which is the same as the Apple Watch Ultra 1, which means it will turn red in the dark to be easier on the eyes. And like I said, the modular watch face is definitely my favorite of all of the Apple watch faces that are out there. Unfortunately, it will not be available on the Apple Watch Series 9 or any other model. It is exclusive to the Ultra models. Now let's talk about what's arguably the most exciting feature on the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Series 9, and that's double tap. Double tap essentially adds the ability for your watch to detect when you tap your fingers together like this, and it's kind of crazy. When you double tap your fingers like this, you can do a variety of things like hang up a phone call, dismiss a notification, or even play or pause music. And you can do all these actions without physically touching your watch, which is pretty interesting in some situations. Maybe you've got your arms full of groceries and you're getting a phone call, you're changing a diaper or something like that, you're preparing a meal and you've got stuff all over your hands. In all those situations, you can now dismiss a notification or answer a phone call or hang up a phone call without touching the watch, which is pretty cool. Apple claims the new S9 SIP is responsible for enabling this feature because it's capable of reading out the sensors of the watches more frequently and at a more precise level. And that's all to say double tap is exclusive to S9 hardware. Unfortunately, that means the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and Series 8 will not be getting this feature in a firmware update. And I know what some of you might be thinking that the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and Series 8 already had this feature feature in the form of something called assistive touch, which is actually an accessibility option that's been there for a while now. However, I can tell you firsthand, it's totally different. Before I move any further into this discussion about double tap, I need to give you a disclaimer. The double tap version I've been testing for the past week or so is a pre-release preview build of the software, and it's only installed on this Apple Watch Series 9 that I have on hand. Unfortunately, it's not on my Ultra 2, so I haven't tested it on the Ultra 2 yet. It's only on my Series 9. So take that for what it's worth. I can only share my opinion on my experience so far. It's probably gonna get better by the time you get it on your watch. Watch. This is what it is right now, just a preview. With all that said, to demonstrate the difference between assistive touch and this double tap feature, I'm gonna put on the older Apple Watch Ultra 1 here with assistive touch turned on. So as you can see here, I have assistive touch turned on. And what it's doing right now is called auto scanning. So it's kind of looking around the user interface for what buttons are available. And if I tap my fingers together, I can select things. I can also clench my fist to do various things. So if I double tap, I can scroll up on my menu here and it's working right now, but it just missed a tap. And if I wanna select something, I can clench my fist. So I'll select music. And now if I double tap, it's, it's a little hard to control because it doesn't pick up every tap and every clench of my fist. Now, to be fair, it does work, but it's a little fiddly. Like it's just not something that's reliable. And because of its lack of reliability, it's not, something I want to use all the time. I'll summarize assistive touch here and say that maybe you can get used to this with some practice and it becomes more useful. Now let's move back to the Apple Watch Series 9 with the double tap feature enabled in the preview build of the software. And I'll show you how that works. All right, so now I've got the Series 9 strapped to my wrist here. And if I double tap my fingers, you'll see that it starts scrolling immediately through my sm smart stack here. And every single double tap that I'm making 
is pretty much recognized. I'd say with about 95% accuracy, and that's interesting because this is a preview build of the software, I'm getting really good results. Now I have noticed that I do need to wear this strap, this Nike band that came with the Series 9, pretty tight to, for this to be reliable. If I wear this loose, it becomes much less reliable. And I would suspect if you use something like a metal band or one of those titanium bracelets, it may be an issue for this, but maybe not. I haven't tested it with that, so I guess time will tell. And now I'm in the podcast app here. And as you can see, I've got the Chase the Summit podcast up here. Shout out to the podcast. Check it out in the description down below. If I double tap my fingers, but, um, there you go. It's playing from my phone in my pocket right now. If I double tap again, it pauses the podcast. Now let's talk about what actually works with the double tap feature because not everything works right now. And that might be because this is a preview build. I'm not totally sure. I was kind of expecting double tap to work in every app and sort of find the primary button that I'd wanna hit by double tapping, but that's not really the case right now. You can do all of the obvious things that you'd wanna do with your hands full, like play and pause music, take a phone call, hang up a phone call, dismiss a text message or a notification. That all works here. However, if you're in an app like the calendar app, I have here which doesn't support double tap and you double tap you get this little wiggle notification that's kind of shaking its head no way and if you're curious like I was if double tap works in a workout when you're out on a run or a bike ride or something like that unfortunately no at the time of filming this video double tap does not work in a workout you can't like tap to select a segment or mark a split or anything like that not right now at least however if you do get a phone call when you're in a workout it'll actually interrupt your workout to ask if you want to pick up the phone and if you do do double tap in that case you will answer the phone so it does work there when it comes to third-party non-apple apps i do believe they'll be able to develop around double tap to be able to utilize that in their app for whatever purpose they may need i'm really curious to see how the masses adopt double tap like are we going to be walking around a mall or a parking lot and see all these people double tapping their fingers I guess time will tell. For me personally right now, I have been really enjoying the double tap feature. To summarize the whole double tap thing, it does work with surprisingly good accuracy. Not in every app yet, but I do think it's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna take the Series 9 off for a second and get back to the Apple Watch Ultra because I wanna talk about battery life. This one, is a whole can of worms. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video about the Apple Watch Ultra 2, it's got the same battery life of about 36 hours in regular use as the original Apple Watch Ultra 1. However, this got me thinking. They announced a super efficient processor with the S9 SIP, but we're getting the same battery life as the older model? That just does not compute in my head. So I went out and I did a whole bunch of testing in the short amount of time I've had these watches. And throughout all of that testing, I found some interesting results. It turns out you can squeeze out more battery life from the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 as compared to the Ultra 1. Now, before I get into these test results, keep in mind, this is all very unscientific. And keep in mind, this Apple Watch Ultra 1 is about a year old. So it's got a one year old battery that's been charged and discharged a bunch of times. And I don't know if that's what's leading into these results or not, just take this with a giant grain of salt, but I did want to share my results anyway. So when I got the Apple Watch Ultra 2, I immediately took it out of the box and I charged it to 100% along with charging the Apple Watch Ultra 1 to 100%. And then I put both in the exact same setting. So after charging the watches with the same settings, I strapped them to my wrist and then I went to sleep. And during that night of sleep, the Apple Watch Ultra 1 lost 5% of battery life after about seven hours of sleeping, and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 lost 3% of battery life in that same duration of time. Now keep in mind, I had these watches set up exactly the same. They were not running any apps. They both had the same watch face turned on, the same brightness. Everything is the same. So after that, I decided to go for a run. I went for a one hour run with both watches set to maximum brightness with their GPS turned on to record that run. And during that one hour, the Apple Watch Ultra lost 8% of battery life and the Ultra 2 lost 5% of battery life, which is kind of a significant difference. And for one final test, I promise this is the last one, I took both these watches and I put them in their flashlight mode at maximum brightness. Now on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, like I said before, I needed to continually roll that digital crown to max out the brightness to keep it boosted during that 10 minutes of time. So I basically sat there rolling the digital crown for science. While on the Apple Watch Ultra 1, it just stayed at its max brightness that whole 10 minute duration. And after that 10 minutes of time, the Apple Watch Ultra 1, the older one, lost 5% of its battery, while the Apple Watch Ultra 2 lost 7% of its battery. Another thing to note is that after that 10 minute duration with flashlight turned on, 
The Apple Watch Ultra 2 actually felt warm to the touch. Like I said, these are very unscientific tests. So just take them with a giant grain of salt. But I think because the S9 processor on the new Ultra 2 is more efficient and they've got that brighter display, if you dial back the brightness on the Ultra 2, you will see gains in terms of battery life as compared to the Ultra 1. And the final topic I wanna talk about in this video that isn't so much about the watch itself, but how it's being made, and that's Apple's 2030 commitment to being carbon neutral. After posting my first look video about these new watches, I've read a lot of comments accusing Apple of virtue signaling with their environmental efforts. And while I'm sure Apple is doing this for their own interest because they've given themselves a big pat on the back in their event video and they really put it all over their website that they're growing carbon neutral and I'm sure they're doing that to attract more people to the brand by saying, hey, we're doing something good for the environment. Yes, that's all true. However, they're doing something. I think it's easy to forget just how much money going carbon neutral is costing Apple. They've had to change their manufacturing process. They're using recycled materials. They're using recycled cobalt in their batteries now, which is really impressive because cobalt mining is a huge issue in the world. So even if this is a marketing ploy, I'm glad they're doing something instead of nothing. Okay, I'm not gonna dive too deep on this because there's a lot to be discussed here and I think the whole environmental thing is so complicated between freight and emissions and how their buildings are operated and solar power, and, ah, there's a lot to it. And I'm, I'm not an expert. All I know is that I'm glad they're addressing the situation in some way and hopefully they can actually do something about it. And now's the point of the video where I wanna talk final thoughts and conclusions and who I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is for. So this is gonna be a tough one. Obviously, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is not a huge leap in innovation. They didn't reinvent the wheel here. They took the Apple Watch Ultra 1, they made some tweaks, and now it's the Ultra 2. Plain and simple. And because the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is sort of an iterative update, I think most people are gonna fall into two camps. The first camp is going to be people upgrading from an older model, and then the second camp is going to be people buying for the first time, their first Apple Watch ever. So let's talk about camp one here, people upgrading. If you have an Apple Watch Ultra 1, should you buy an Ultra 2? Probably not. <laughs> there hasn't been a huge leap of innovation here, and honestly, the Apple Watch Ultra 1 is still an awesome watch. If you are an Ultra 1 user and you really want some of these new features like double tap or the new S9 chip, then it might be worth upgrading if you're willing to shell out the money, that's up to you to decide. Now let's move over to the second camp, which is people who have never owned an Apple Watch. Should you buy the Apple Watch Ultra 2? Well. I think yes. So if you were interested in buying the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and you're just about to pull the trigger on it, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is a no-brainer. You get a brighter display, you might get more battery life maybe, asterisks, and you get additional features like on-device Siri and that really cool double tap feature which is coming down the road, along with the more efficient and more powerful S9 SIP. And if you want the current best Apple Watch on the market, the Ultra 2 is it, so go for it. And on that note, I also wonder how well Apple is listening to their customers, because I read a lot of YouTube comments on the videos I make, and I've made a lot of videos about Apple Watches, and let me tell you, the first thing that people are asking for is not a brighter display. It's not even close to that. Everyone's happy with the display, so I'm not sure why they made it brighter. The one thing I see the most often, and maybe it's because of my audience, is people want more battery life. What's funny is I think a lot of people would sacrifice brightness or even responsiveness of the display for more battery life. People want a dumber Apple Watch. They want a slower Apple Watch with more battery life but it seems like Apple's going in the other direction. And that's my rant about battery life and not to take anything away from the Apple Watch Ultra 2 because it's still a really awesome watch and it's probably the best smartwatch on the market right now. That is the end of this video and now it's the point in the video where I wanna hear from you, the viewer. Are you interested in the Apple Watch Ultra 2 or the Series 9? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Or if you're just gonna look for an Apple Watch Ultra 1 secondhand, that might be a way to save some money. If you are interested in picking up one of these watches, check out the links in the description down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. If you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, entertaining, anything, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below. Check out my podcast and my Instagram down there. Do all the things in the description. Comment. Is there anything I forgot? Okay, friends, I gotta go. I'll see you next time. Bye.